Good morning. The sunrise was just too pretty. I thought you guys might need to look at that a little bit before we get started. You really can't see it once I step up. There, it kind of, I kind of mess it up. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. Gorgeous sunrise. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Frank and Frankie and Pat. Aloha. It's going to be 80 this afternoon. Pat, I hope so. Maybe not here at the beach, but I'm hoping to get out and surf a little bit today. Good morning, everyone. Let me fix this one more time. It doesn't seem to be quite right. There. Good morning. Hey, Pat, it's probably time for you and, you and Peter and me to meet up in Daytona. Maybe this weekend we'll make a ride up there. We got to get... What's the weather going to be on, on, uh, sat on Saturday or Sunday? Maybe we'll, maybe uh, Peter Morton will meet us in Daytona or someplace. Praying for Scott's ear, Martha. Aloha, Scott. Hope you're doing, hope you do better today. So we're, le we're le reading in 203, God reveals his name. Wait, wait a minute, did I, did I do this right? Yes, here we go. God reveals his name, number 203. God revealed himself to his people Israel by making his name known to them. A name expresses a person's essence and identity and the meaning of this person's life. It's very interesting when you read in the Old Testament what people's names mean. Uh, well, the New Testament too. When Jesus gave the name of, uh, of Simon, he gave him the name Peter, which means rock. You know, um, like Rocky Balboa. You know, it has a, it has a it has a meaning to it. Uh, Gideon, his uh, his um, Hebrew name was Jerubbabel, which meant he will contend with Baal. He will fight against that demon god. Uh, so names really mean something. God revealed Himself to His people Israel by making His name known to them. A name expresses a person's essence and identity and the meaning of this person's life. God has a name. He is not an anonymous force. I think we read this yesterday, but I, I, don't, I didn't mark where we left off, so we'll go over it a little bit again. To disclose uses one's name is to make oneself known to others in a way that is to hand oneself over by becoming accessible, capable of being known more intimately and addressed personally. God revealed himself progressively and under different names to his people. But the revelation, there's so many different names for God in the, in the Old Testament. There's um, Al Shaddai. Um, oh, well, now I'm going to be at a loss. I can't remember them all. But so many different uh, names that God referred to himself. But, but the name that he has, the name that is above all names. Good morning, John. Al Shaddai, Al Shaddai. Do, 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 do. God revealed himself progressively and under different names to his people, but the revelation that proved to be the fundamental one for both the Old and New Covenants was the revelation of the divine name to Moses in the theophany of the burning bush. What is a theophany? When the angel of the Lord appeared to uh, Gideon, for example, the burning bush, a theophany is a pre-incarnate manifestation or presence of Jesus, of God. It's God, the, the, the author, entering into his book for a moment. These pages are nice and thin, which makes it nice because you can carry it anywhere, but sometimes it's hard to turn them. Okay. It sounds a little bit like the way St. Thomas Aquinas would phrase it. He can do it, and he did do it. The God, the God who will put his Almighty to power to work for this plan. I am who am. This is from Exodus 3.13. Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, Moses Yahweh, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am 
that means God is existence. I am. I am who I am means God is essence. He's both the source of all of our existence and essence. This is the name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. In revealing his mysterious name, Yahweh, I am he who is, I am who am, or I am who I am, God says who he is, and by that, and by what name he is to be called. This divine name is mysterious, just as God is mysterious. It is at once a name revealed and something like the refusal of a name. And hence, it better expresses God as what he is, infinitely above everything that we can understand or say. He is the hidden God. His name is ineffable. And he is the God who makes himself close to men. It's very interesting. It's saying here, it's almost like he, it's, it's a refusal of a name. When he says, I am who I am, mean, it's like, he, he, he defines his name as his nature. Like when the angel came to Mary, he said, Hail Mary, full of grace, as if full of grace uh, was her surname. And when Mary uh, uh, revealed herself at one of the apparitions, she said, I am the, the, I am the immaculate, I am the immaculate conception, as if that is her name. That's her essence. By revealing his name, God at the same time reveals his faithfulness, which is from everlasting to everlasting, valid for the past. I am the God of your fathers. As for the future, I will be with you. God who reveals his name as I am, reveals himself as the God who is always there, present to his people in order to save them. Faced with God's fascinating and mysterious presence, man discovers his own insignificance. And I remember that moment when I discovered how insignificant, I, how small I was. I was on the beach in Sea Cliff Beach near Santa Cruz in Aptos, California, and I saw the waves coming and coming and coming all day long. And I knew they had been breaking there for thousands or millions of years and that they would continue to break after I left. So I realized I was such a small little drip of time that I would be here. And then I saw a sailboat sailing over the horizon and I had that sense of not just eternity, but now of infinity too, of that, 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 that out there somewhere was the God that created me. But I would have to say, although I felt small, I didn't really feel insignificant. I felt that I was special because the God who created all that had created me too. But before the burning bush, Moses takes off his sandals and veils his face in the presence of God's holiness. Before the glory of the thrice holy God, Isaiah cries out, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. Before the divine song, signs wrought by Jesus, Peter exclaims, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. But because God is holy, he can forgive the man who realize that, realizes that he is a sinner before him. Think about Judas who betrayed Jesus. He was distraught. He realized he had blown it. And he was shamed and he killed himself. Think about Peter. He was distraught. He had betrayed Jesus. He had denied him in the middle of the night. I don't even know the man. I've been there in Jerusalem. I've walked the, I walked the uh, Via Della Rosa in the pre-dawn hours when it was still dark and I heard roosters crow. And Peter, Peter's response was to, was to repent and respond to God's call to mercy. Peter, do you agape me? You know I feel you, you Lord. Peter, do you agape me? You know I feel you, you Lord. In other words, Jesus saying, do you love me unconditionally? And Peter was saying, I do love you, but I, I don't have a perfect love, you know? But Jesus raised him up. So when we blow it, we can either 
continue to run from God or we can throw ourselves at God's mercy. Both of those men did dastardly things that, that night. One returned and became uh, the, 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 corner, you know, the, the rock that the church was built on, Peter. One killed himself and went and, and decided to go to hell. But because God is holy, he can forgive the man who realizes that he is a sinner before him. I will not execute my fierce anger, for I am God and not man. The Holy One is in your midst. The Apostle John says, likewise, we shall reassure our hearts before him. And whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. For there is therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life of Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. There is therefore no, no more condemnation in Christ Jesus. Your concupiscence and your original fallen nature will, original sin and the fallen nature of your soul will condemn you. The accuser of the brethren, Satan, will condemn you every moment of the day. And your job, in the name of the Lord, though your enemy, many may be around you like buzzing bees, is to cut him off in the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I know you have mercy on me. Uh, I believe, help my unbelief. I love you, help me to love you more. Have mercy on me. The prayer of, of the monks of the desert, the prayer of the, the uh, monastery in Hawaii where I'm an oblate, the Benedictine monastery, monastery. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The monks of the desert would repeat that prayer through the day. I have, I, as a Benedictine oblate, I wear the Jesus beads, the 50 beads that we pray, that predates the rosary back to the you're around 300 AD to pray that prayer. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Enjoy the sunrise. His mercies are new every morning. Jean, how do you say your name? Is it Jean or Jean? Jean, I, I don't know where you're from, if you're from America or where you're from, but want to know how to pronounce your name, if you can somehow text it, to, text it in the messages. Have a beautiful day, you guys, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Aloha.